Okay, so I would like to welcome everybody to uh, meet the candidate. And remember that our goal with this is just to simply get to know each of the candidates at a more personal level and find out who they really are. So today we have uh, David Cook, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and then we'll move into some questions. Great, thanks Lori. And first of all, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate the, uh, the chamber um, being actively involved in helping candidates get their, you know, get their uh, platform out. So thank you for doing that. But my name is David Cook and I currently serve as the mayor in Mansfield and have done so for just over 12 years and I'm currently running for Texas House District 96, uh, which is currently occupied by Representative Bill Zedler, who is uh, not seeking re-election. So thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. So let's start off with some easy questions for you. So where were you born and raised? I was literally born in, a, born in a hospital in Fort Worth, Texas, but I've always lived in Mansfield, Texas. Um, you know, since I was, you know, went through grade school and everything here in Mansfield and uh, went to uh, Stephen F. Austin State University. So I lived in Nacogdoches for, you know, for a period of time as well. Okay. And um, did you, when you were a little kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, I think, you know, when I, when I think back, to, you know, to, to a little kid, I would, I would say, you know, possibly I, I remember uh, being really impressed with firefighters. My dad was a volunteer uh, fireman for the uh, city of Kennedale uh, when I was, when I was very young. And so I remember being enamored with uh, firefighters uh, at a young age. Okay. All right. And what was your very first job? So my very first job, well, I mean, of course, growing up, my, um, my dad was, um, you know, had a full-time job at uh, General Dynamics, which of course now is Lockheed Martin, but uh, had a secondary business where he um, had a lawn mowing business. And so I mowed lots of lawns uh, as a young youngster and, and into teenagers. And then as I got into middle school and high school, I started working for the Fort, Fort Worth Star Telegram selling uh, newspaper subscriptions. And so I think that's probably the first time I remember getting a, an actual paycheck um, from someone other than my dad. Okay. And um, how would your friends describe you? That's a good question. I mean, it probably depends on which one you asked uh, from, from time to time. But I, but I think, um, you know, probably a lot of them that know me well would say I have a, you know, I have a big heart and I've been known to be uh, one that, um, that, that will shed a tear, um, you, know, when, you know, when my heart is touched. But uh, someone that they can count on, hopefully that's what, how they would say it, is someone that uh, has, a, has a compassionate heart and that uh, they can count on when, when they need something. Okay. And how long have you been in your current uh, career? My current career? Um, well, I, I had the opportunity to start working for, for Senator Chris Harris when I finished uh, undergraduate school. I wanted to be a, a, I knew I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to be a state legislator. And, and so I sought uh, very hard, <laughs> sought after working for Senator Harris because he was an attorney and obviously a state senator. Uh, and this would have been in 1993. And so I started working for Senator Harris as a initially as a law clerk and then the legislative aide and, and ultimately became an associate attorney in his law firm and then uh, eventually we became law partners and so I would say you know in the employment with uh, Chris Harris since 1993 um, as a law clerk and now as an attorney. Wow so you you have some definite goals and it looks like you're on track for it um, just to kind of ask you a few um, uh, political questions I guess um, what, what do you think the country's uh, biggest challenge is as we move into the future? I would say unity. I mean, that, I mean just simply stated, is, uh, I, would, I would say unity is what we need. And uh, I think what the average everyday citizen in the United States, I think so that's what they're seeking. They want uh, uh, someone that, that can bring this country and this, you know, our state and all the way down to the local level. You know, I think they're seeking unity and just simply getting along with your neighbor. Yeah. What should the priorities be for our country? Well, unity right now. I mean, I think that uh, we have a lot of um, you know, a lot of bad things going on in our country right now. And I think we need to um, get, get behind um, candidates that, uh, that are seeking unity, not, uh, not trying to tear us apart. And um, I think that that needs to be the number one priority right now is, is uh, supporting candidates that can bring unity, that can unify uh, from, the, from the courthouse to the White House. Is there anything specific that you would change? In, in what regard? I mean, obviously uh, there's... Yeah, just, yeah. What do you mean? Like change as, a, as, a, as an elected official or... Yeah, as an elected official, if you had a magic wand 
and could do something, what would it be? I think right now, I mean, it would just, it would be, you know, and I hate to keep, you know, bringing back the word unity, but I think right now, if, if I could wave a magic wand, I would, I would want to bring peace and unity uh, to our country, which would trickle down to the, to the uh, local level uh, where the neighbors feel comfortable uh, conversing with one another and just going back to, to normalcy. And obviously, you know, we're still in the middle of, of a national pandemic. And so I think if I could, you know, wave that magic wand, if I would just want to bring, uh, you know, just peace and unity. Um, and normalcy um, back to our everyday citizens. Do you think we'll get there? I do. I'm very confident that that's going to happen. Okay. Um, so now for some light ones. So who is your hero? Well, um, I'd say depending on depending on the time, but you know, I mean, as a as a kid growing up, I you know look up to my dad a lot. Uh, just his work ethic was was um, something that stood out to me. Um, there was a coach in high school, a guy named Coach Billy Whitman, that uh, stood out to me as someone that uh, you know, I learned a lot of life lessons from. And then also at that time was a guy named R.L. Anderson, a stadium named after him here in the city of Mansfield. And, uh, he was a, a counselor at Mansfield High School and uh, learned, just learned, learned a lot from him and looked up to him. But um, as, as far as uh, those would be some of the you know, people that stand out that, uh, you know, that I really looked up, look up to and look back on. If you took those three men, what were the characteristics that um, that they had maybe in common or the things that really impacted you, just character traits about them? Yeah, I would say that they all um, had, a, had a big, big heart. Um, my father being the only one that's, you know, alive and alive and well, but um, Coach, uh, Coach Whitman lost a battle to Lou Gehrig disease and Mr. Anderson died many years ago just from natural causes, as, as I understand it. But, I would say that you know their heart would be this you know would be this the thing that I would see um, that impacted me the most and uh, probably makes me the person I am today. And I really think that that's what um, you know maybe led them to uh, believing in me and pushing me to you know to do things, you know, set goals, you know, set a plan, and, and then implement the plan to get things accomplished. Okay. Um... I know you, you have a hugely busy schedule. How do you recharge your batteries? Well, I say, I'll tell you, I, um, when, it's time to, when it's time to rest, I, 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 I rest quickly. Uh, but what I really like to do is when I can just unplug and, and, and you know, just kind of get away from the business and just spend time with, with family. Okay. Give me an opportunity um, to rest. just, you know, be myself and not have to, um, be on point because you know, at all the other times that uh, that's certainly the case. Okay. Um, do you have uh, any pet peeves? I would say probably lazy laziness is is probably um, high on that list. You know, people that just um, that don't you know they don't care about, about their fellow you know, fellow citizens. Those are probably the be the things that annoy me the most. Okay. Um, do you have a bucket list? Not so much. I mean, I hear people talk about bucket lists a lot, but uh, I, I would say I'm, just, I'm you know, I try to be you know, more consistent. And, you know, just as we talked about earlier with my employment, um, I started with, uh, in 1993, working for Senator Harris. And, you know, now we, we still practice, have a law practice and title company out of the same building that I started at back on uh, West Abram. We, I still practice there today. So I would say that, um, you know, my life is more, you know, more um, just I would say more consistency and I don't really know that I would have a, a quote-unquote bucket list. Okay. Um, have your priorities or um, the way that you look at things, have they changed within the last 10 years? Yeah, no, no question. Okay. No question. Um, I, can, I can say that my kids are probably the only ones that Know what parapet walls are when you, when you talk about um, you know kids that uh, at a young age they would hear you hear me you know driving around the cities and pointing out the differences in, in buildings and you know how things are in Mansfield and how how things may be different in a different community or or um, you know Tony and I going into a different um, in a different city or a different state and you know looking at uh, parking options looking at what can we bring to downtown Mansfield and so it's just it just I'm always you know almost always thinking about um, what I can do to, to make things better. Okay. 
Um, are you a book or a movie person? Definitely a movie. As a as a younger uh, couple, Tanya and I, we would we would read uh, quite a bit. But I think nowadays the problem with that is is I fall asleep pretty quickly if uh, <laughs> we begin reading. But um, we certainly enjoy watching movies and actually talked about it this morning. We are ready to to get back to the to the local Cinemark and uh, you know just sit down and watch a movie. So I would definitely say a movie person. Do you watch Netflix? You bet. Do you have a favorite show? <laughs> well, there's a there's a good one that we just started, uh, Heart of Dixie. I'm sure I'll, I'll uh, get some heckling from that. But uh, Tanya found Heart of Dixie, and it's a, a very good series. It's it's based in it's based out of uh, obviously it's fiction, but it's based or set in Bluebell, Alabama. And there's a uh, local mayor that's on there. His name is Levon Hayes, and I really enjoyed watching Mayor Levon Hayes. Uh, he often referred to himself in the third person and it was just a very, very, uh, very good, you know, uh, down to earth sitcom that we, we really enjoyed. Just finished, um, I guess there were four seasons and finished that. But I would say right now we're on the Yellowstone and I, I really am a big fan of, of Yellowstone as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could have a conversation with anyone living or dead, who would it be with and why? Um, you know, this first one that came to my mind was uh, Ronald Reagan. And um, the reason I say that is, is, um, you know, and obviously didn't, didn't know him. And, and uh, you know, he was a, a president when I was, you know, still in you know, grade school. Um, so, but what, I, what I've heard, you know, about him as a, me as an adult is, is how he was able to bring people together and, and uh, how it, you know, it used to be okay that, you know, that people would agree, you know, 80% of the time, disagree 20% of the time. And, you know, right now, I think our, you know, our problem as a world and, you know, and, you know, as a, as a country, more or less, and uh, often as a state, is it, that uh, we have so many people that are on the extreme ends of the spectrum. You know, some people are extremely to the right or extremely to the left. And, you know, I feel like that, um, you know, President Reagan was, was able to bring people together. And, you know, when you agreed 80% of the time, you were actually, you know, accomplishing things 80% of the time. You you're reaching across the aisle, so to speak. And, and just, um, you know, it, the, uh, the goal was to make sure that, you know, that, that the end result is and, uh, being accomplished, but it's going to take compromise on, on both sides uh, to, you know, to a certain extent. And so I would just say that I would, you know, I really would enjoy sitting down and, and having that conversation, you know, with, with the president and asking him, you know, how, you know, what was, what was his strategy in making that happen? Because this, from what I hear, uh, it seemed to, seemed to be very effective and, Obviously, it's a different day and time, but I sure would like to get back to that, to where, you know, that um, you know, we, we just had, you know, our differences weren't so, uh, so much contrast in the, in the two. Okay. Um, what inspires you? I think, um, you know, fixing stuff. And I, I, know I say fixing, you know, uh, growing up here in Mansfield, but I, I think I, you know, I kind of consider myself a, uh, often say I'm a professional problem solver because whether I'm doing stuff as a mayor or, you know, on the other hand, as a lawyer, I'm often presented with, you know, with problems. And uh, I like to, you know, look at the problem, look at the available solutions, and then make sure, you know, make sure it gets accomplished. And, you know, it's, I, I'm not one that likes to, you know, uh, let grass grow under my feet. I like to, to get things done. Once I, once I realize there's a problem, you know, and you know, people often you know, bring those to my attention, whether again, whether as a mayor, as a lawyer, you know, uh, here in, in, in the office uh, or otherwise. I just, but I really like to analyze, you know, what the problem is and how can we fix it. Okay. Um, what is your uh, favorite childhood memory that um, has had a lasting impact on your life? That's a good question. Lasting childhood impression. I don't know that I would point to any any one uh, specific memory, but I, th <clears throat> I think just you know the you know the uh, the memory of of having two brothers growing up and just you know I was a middle child and just you know how you know really felt like my you know my childhood was was you know amazing, very blessed. And so I would say that that's, you know, that that's probably what has stuck with me is it's just, you know, the importance of family. And so I would, I would probably say that's the thing that sticks with me the most is just the, 
the upbringing and you know my memory of, of how I grew up with you know, with my brothers and my parents and you know, how important that is to me today. Well, and since I know you, I, I think that I would tie that together. I know relationships are very important to you. Um, sure. So maybe that's where that stems from. Yeah, that's good, yeah. good observation. I appreciate, uh, appreciate yeah. your point. Because it, it is, I mean, I think if, you know, in relationships that, you know, I like, I like, you know, two-way you know, uh, communication, two-way relationships. And, you know, I like, uh, you know, to think that when two people get together and set their minds um, on a common goal that, uh, that things can get done that way. Absolutely. Um, do you have a personal motto that you live by? Um, I don't know that I have a personal motto. Let's see. No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, some of the things I've talked about today, like I said, I don't, you know, I, I try not to, um, you know, put things off, you know, why, you know, why wait to, for tomorrow to do something that you could do today? I mean, that's something that, that, uh, you know, that I really, you know, strive to do because I think if you put it off till tomorrow, then tomorrow comes next week, next week, comes next month, and, you know, you just become uh, accustomed to making ex excuses. And so I, I just, I like to, you know, get, you know, get things accomplished, I would say. Okay. So I, I have one last question for you. And um, do you care to cast any predictions for our mayor race here in Mansfield? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very popular question. I've, I've, I've fielded that question once or twice over the, I would say over the last few months, but I guess over the last uh, eight months. Uh, now that, uh, it's been over eight months since I you know, announced that I was running for, for this seat for, you know, for House District 96. Uh, made that decision on December 8th and uh, Tony and I filed on December 9th. And so since December 9th, I have, have received that question very often. But, but what I've, what I've um, committed to is I really want to let all four candidates you know, do their thing. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to cast my judgment or you know, my opinion uh, into that race. I, I firmly believe that there'll be a runoff. And, you know, who knows? It, you know, I could certainly be wrong, but I would, I would think with four candidates, it certainly could be a runoff. And so, I would just say that uh, all four candidates need to, you know, do the best, you know, best job of, of showing the citizens of Mansfield why they need to be the next mayor of uh, the city of Mansfield. But I will say that, um, you know, and this isn't because of me, but because of the things that are going on in the city of Mansfield right now, from, you know, from the city council's perspective, this, you know, management team, uh, just how, how great things are. Um, in Mansfield, I, I'd say the next mayor has a has a tougher job than maybe maybe it was when I came in. Uh, things were really going poorly in the city uh, when I took over in 2008. Uh, the mayor prior to me had um, won election in May of 2007 and resigned in December uh, after a very brief stand. And things were very there was a lot of, of uh, you know just infighting at the time. And I ran on the campaign of working together, and uh, I feel like that we've certainly done that over the last 12 years. And so. I just wanted to inspire, you know, whoever becomes the next mayor of the city of Mansfield. I, uh, I just want to inspire them to continue to do great things for the city of Mansfield and, and just continue to make it the city that it is. But, you know, just a simple, and I know this is a lot more than what you asked me, Lori, but just a simple uh, statistic kind of tells you, um, you know, and this just came up, we were told this recently, but uh, our uh, CFO for the city of Mansfield, Peter Phyllis, recently told us that, um, the numbers that we received last month uh, for sales tax. So that would be actually comparing uh, July of 2019 to July of 2020. Uh, our sales tax was up 19%. And, you know, it doesn't sound like that big a deal until you, until you start thinking about that, you know, that we're still in the middle of a, of a pandemic, you know, with everything that's, you know, that's been closed and that's been so, you know, so impacted by COVID. It just speaks volumes for how well things are going in the city of Mansfield, and so I just uh, want to encourage and, and uh, challenge the next mayor to, to continue to do great things for the city of Mansfield, and, and um, I'll, I will certainly be praying for the next uh, mayor so that they do uh, great things for the city. Um, and I just want to say thank you to you know to all four Pastor Evans and Brent News and Terry Moore and George Fassett. You know, I appreciate and just want to say thank you for all four of you stepping up and wanting wanting to be the next mayor. It's a very um, difficult and challenging job, but it's also very rewarding to, to be the mayor of the city um, for a city like the, the city of Mansfield, Texas. Okay. All right. Well, I, I thank you very much for participating and uh, look forward to the uh, candidate forum. So Great. thank you.
again, Lori, thank you for doing this. It's, it's very important to, you know, to get this information out to the citizens, whether we're talking about a local mayor's race or to city council or legislative races. And, and I just, I, I just want to say thank you for recognizing the importance and getting information out to the citizens so that they can make informed decisions. Thanks. All right. See you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay.